Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship with Yate Methodist Church, whether you're worshipping online or joining us on the telephone and wherever you're worshipping from this morning, you're all very welcome. Before we begin our service, I'll just light the candle. So traditionally, on the second Sunday of each month, we celebrate those who have a birthday in that month. So let's all join together and sing happy birthday to anybody who was born in April. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And now we welcome John Emmett to our pulpit this morning. Welcome, John. God is spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you very much for your welcome, a visiting preacher and a very new experience for me, not having a congregation in front of me. I have to behave and stay here behind the pulpit, um, but it's good to have Patrick Ben and Andrea singing for us in our worship today. Let us pray. For Jesus' followers, after Easter Day, life would never be the same again. Their new life with the risen Lord was just beginning. And so let us stir ourselves to remember that we are children of the resurrection, and we approach our Lord with senses alert to the new life and lessons that he has to share with us today. And in his name we make this prayer. Amen. So we meet via the wizardry of uh, technology uh, and wherever we are, Jesus is with us. And so we have sung for us, Jesus stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Jesus stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Be a sweet agreement at the meeting of our eyes. Oh, Jesus, we love you. So we gather here. Join Stand among us at 
the breaking of the bread. Join us as one body as we worship you. Let us pray. Lord, you accept our doubts and embrace our questions like a wise parent encouraging your children to express themselves, hiding your hurt at our scepticism, always hoping for the best and seeing our potential. We worship and adore you for believing in us. Amen and a prayer of confession. We confess that we are so often judgmental of others. In particular, we berate those who do not share our beliefs. What need have they of proof? Why can't they just believe? Yet we live in a world where little is taken at face value. Fake news surrounds us and the camera definitely does lie. Therefore, Lord, forgive us when we look down upon unbelievers and doubters, the ones who demand proof, for this is the world in which we live and the world to which we must proclaim your truth. There is no proof we can offer in these times except to show our belief in the ways in which you reach out by accepting and loving unconditionally, by showing patience and forbearance to those who differ from us, or is it that we differ from them? Therefore, forgive us when we fail to reflect your truths in our daily lives, and let us become testaments of your risen power. May Christ be evidence in us, in all that we do and say. Amen. And the prayer for this Sunday, the second Sunday in Easter, let us pray. Faithful God, the strength of all who believe and the hopes of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we hear again now the song, Open Our Eyes, Lord. say that we love 
Now we hear our gospel reading for today from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, beginning to read at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails are and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. So from last week, um, Easter morning and Mary meeting Jesus at the tomb, we move on to the evening and to the scene where the disciples, having seen their Lord and Master cruelly put to death, fearful for themselves, as we know from the way in which Peter was all too ready to deny his allegiance, Jesus, the risen Lord, comes among them. Shalom, that's a wonderful word, which means more than just a simple peace and greeting, but a deep inner sense of presence and well-being. And Jesus comes and blesses the disciples and commissions them. An important part of all the resurrection stories is the commissioning. The disciples are now going to be on their own. They were the ones to carry on uh, Jesus's mission and ministry, proclaiming the good news, the love of God and life in him. And so Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit. This is uh, John's Gospel's version of Pentecost. Not the flames and the power from heaven coming down on the disciples that we read about in the uh, Acts of the Apostles. But Jesus himself, the risen Lord, breathing his Pentecostal power on the disciples, enabling them, challenging them 
to go out and carry on his mission. And then we have this lovely story about doubting Thomas. Uh, the phrase, hasn't it, has, has sort of come down in, in popular culture um, about someone who doubts, someone who needs evidence. Um, it's a bit mean on Thomas, I always think. And John, in writing this gospel, is uh, making a much more important point than uh, having a little dig at, uh, at Thomas. Yes, of course, we all want evidence. Um, one of the criticisms of uh, the Christian faith is, where is the evidence? That's something that uh, Richard Dawkins was always saying, show me the evidence. Well, Thomas wants to see the evidence, and that's understandable. And he gets it. He is given the opportunity to touch Jesus, to feel those marks of crucifixion. But he doesn't. He doesn't touch him. And indeed, uh, remember the story of Mary. Um, Jesus says, uh, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended. I am ascending to the Father. There's no need to touch. And Thomas proclaims, um, my Lord and my God. The reaction to the risen Christ is one of worship and service. And so they are commissioned, sent out, given the power to forgive sins. Something that Jesus got into trouble with in his earthly life, wasn't it? Um, from the, the uh, Pharisees. But carrying out um, uh, Jesus' mission, not only to talk about the love of God, but to challenge people for their sinful ways. They were to carry on his mission, having been blessed and anointed by the Holy Spirit. But there's even more to this story. There's so much packed into this, this reading because the point that John is making, not just about Thomas, but to us all. Happy are those who have not seen but believe. And of course, we are in that same situation, aren't we? Uh, we have not seen. We just have the, um, uh, the gospel passage here to, to believe. Um, we have uh, 2,000 years on from the resurrection. Christ is still with us. Um, and we have that belief that he is with us and he offers life in all its fullness. That's what uh, the risen Christ tells the disciples to go out and do. So that's really the sort of punchline for us to go out. We will never know quite what happened in that upper room, how much you want to take these things literally or how much you want to take them uh, mythologically um, in the strict sense of the word myth of an eternal truth that is with us now and forever, that Jesus is risen with us, anoints us as his disciples, his modern day disciples to go out and share the good news. Share those Bible stories. And of course, again, in this little passage, um, at one of the endings of John's gospel, there's another chapter to follow, but this, uh, what he says at the end of this chapter is very much like a signing off. He's saying, I could have said loads more. I could have given you many more examples of these signs, um, but you've got enough now to be going on with. You've got enough to share the fact that Jesus is sent by God, anointed by God, and sent out into the world to proclaim God's love, for he is God's son, God in a human life. I've given you these stories, now go out and proclaim them. So in typical fashion, John's gospel, different from um, the, uh, the synoptic gospels, which uh, lay things out in, in sort of order, Jesus' death, his resurrection, uh, the ascension, and the giving of the Holy Spirit. 
John just packs it all into, into these few verses. Mary says, I'm ascending, the Pentecost of giving the Spirit, the resurrection Jesus appearing, the commissioning that uh, uh, is an essential part of the resurrection life and the life that we share and the life that we as his modern day disciples are called to proclaim. Jesus Christ is risen, alleluia, and through him he offers life in all its fullness, all our well-being, all the truth of existence, because he is the one sent by God, the one we proclaim, and for that we give thanks, and for that we go out from this place, from the places wherever you are uh, listening in and looking in to be his people, his resurrection people, proclaiming the good news of God's love. Amen. So we come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. And so we offer our prayers for the church, for the world, for those whom we know and love. Heavenly Father, we pray for the life of the church, for the ways in which we can worship by different means in this time of lockdown. We pray for all those in authority, our ministers, for Lee here at Yate, and for all those who have to learn to work in different ways. We pray that you will give them the strength and courage and the creativity to lead us in worship and service. We pray for the church that it will be witnessing um, in through the funeral and the reflections upon the life of the Duke of Edinburgh. Important times in the national life when the church is called upon and people throughout the nation and the world will be praying. We thank you that you touch people's lives and we thank you for the church that that can channel those wishes and desires and sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the life of the world, for those areas of conflict, and particularly we ask for your prayers of uh, healing and wholeness in the community of Northern Ireland. We pray for our nation as it mourns the loss of the Duke of Edinburgh, and we pray for all those whose lives have been touched and influenced by his initiatives, particularly the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. We pray for all those in authority and government and the health service in these times of anxiety as we start to unlock our national life. We pray that you will keep people safe that the NHS and health services will be able to cope. And we thank you for all their work and dedication that they have shown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those whom we know and love, those who are going through difficult times, those who are anxious about their health, those who are suffering from COVID, and those who are suffering from the effects of it, long COVID. We pray for those who have lost loved ones through the disease. And at this time when we think of those who mourn, we pray especially for Her Majesty the Queen, for members of the royal family, as they prepare for life without the Duke of Edinburgh, and for the service that will take place this week.
Lord, we pray for all those who mourn. May they find comfort and solace in the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the lives of those who have followed the way of Christian service. And particularly, we give thanks for the life of the Duke of Edinburgh, a man of faith, one who supported the Queen in her faith. Confident that uh, this Easter time with the great message of the resurrection and death conquered and life eternal. He and those who have died recently may rest in peace and rise in glory. These prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us that prayer, which now we will sing together. Of course, at this point in the service, I would be uh, moving to the side there to receive the offering. Um, all churches obviously taking a big hit in terms of their offering. And uh, I know that now um, through uh, the banking system and et cetera, um, gifts will be offered in, uh, in their own special way in this time. Let us pray. Lord, you offer us so much, and in particular, you offer us the life death and resurrection of your Lord Jesus Christ for our faith. And in return, we are commissioned to offer that life of love to those whom we meet through the life and work of our personal relationships and the life of the church. And we also offer our monetary gifts, and we ask that however they are collected and used, they may be to your praise and your glory. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So our final hymn we're going to hear, that proclamation, just like that proclamation that uh, Thomas made when he saw the risen Lord. He is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from the dead, he is Lord.
And so, wherever we may be, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.